I took a course in nuclear physics in college and thought it was just the most exciting thing since baseball. I uh, was a graduate student here at Yale, then a professor and director of the lab for from 90, 1995 to 2008. I'm now D. Allen Bromley Professor of Physics Emeritus, which means old. The big event here was the new accelerator, which was qualitatively different than anything before and opened up whole new areas of nuclear physics. Everybody in the world was paying attention to what we did here. Uh, when I first arrived at uh, the Wright Nuclear Structure Lab, it was more than 50 years ago. One had not detected neutrinos from the sun at this point. Uh, one had not, and certainly not from uh, galaxies far, far away. The big question was, what's the structure of the nucleus, of the atomic nucleus? It's still a big question. There were major developments going on in the field. I like to think of it as a triple revolution. One part was accelerators, advances in accelerators. Second part was advances in new kinds of detectors. And the third was the use of computers. The first computer that we had was, was really very modest. It was a great big box of cables and, uh, and all sorts of electronics, uh, probably with the capability of something that to be about this big these days. Previous accelerators had lower energy. Lower energy meant that you couldn't study as many nuclei and see as many phenomena. And this accelerator, MP1, or Emperor, was much higher energy than anything before. And it opened up a new era, which is often called the era of heavy ion science. Throughout the 60s and 70s, it was the premier facility. If you wanted to have the ideal accelerator and have it drop down from heaven, it would have been, it would have been this one. I started uh, here as an operator on the accelerator back in 2003. We worked uh, the machine 24 hours a day, five days a week. There was always a new experiment on the horizon. Every week we would come in and prepare the beam for the researchers and start the accelerator up. One of our more exotic experiments was our lunar soil experiment. Just working with the lunar soil alone was uh, incredibly exciting and interesting. And I feel fortunate to have been involved in so much that I have been here and uh, it's incredibly exciting to know that we have actually made so much progress and have pushed our understanding of the universe further. Taking the accelerator apart was, was there was a lot of mixed emotions for me because I was responsible for its operation for so long. You know, I knew all of the work and, and all of the people that had, had contributed to, to make it run and all many, of course, the users and, and collaborators from, from the United States and, and around the world. So certainly it was, it was mixed, mixed emotions. But at the same time, you know, looking forward it was also exciting and, and still is exciting. Coming to uh, Yale and uh, taking over as director of the Wright Laboratory was an opportunity and a challenge. I was aware of the history and legacy of the Wright Nuclear Structure Lab and uh, it was an opportunity in that uh, I was given the opportunity to uh, create a laboratory, to create infrastructure, to create facilities and to create a community that would really allow us to go after you know, the science that we wanted to do. Wright Lab is is a playground for us uh, scientists. It's an intellectual playground, it's a technical playground. The idea was to um, design a laboratory that is interactive, that has the facilities, the infrastructure that we need uh, to build the next experiments, and that inspires and that uh, yeah, creates new ideas. It's a little bit surprising that you can be a grown-up and get paid to try to answer the questions that you had when you were three or four. But sometimes I feel like that's where I am as a particle physicist. We look around at nature and we see patterns and we think that maybe it's possible for us to understand something fundamental about how all of this works and how all of this puts together. What Wright Lab provides for us is really a center of excellence. It's a place for community, a place where we can make things, build things, come together, ask important scientific questions. It fills a void. 
you need to go where you can be creative. This is the thing as a scientist. My style is to sort of uh, isolate myself in a laboratory or in my office to analyze data to build detectives, but there's nothing to take the place of interactions with colleagues. You know, you go in and, and a couple of uh, students or postdocs are in there and I'll ask them, you know, I'm having this issue with my detector and I know you're doing something similar. How would you handle this? We're all interested in the same sorts of questions, but people are coming at it in very different ways. So to be able to attack the problem from all those different directions, I think is both exciting, but also extremely important for trying to answer some of these really hard questions. In a large part, it's the community, I think. There are undergraduates working with us, there are graduate students, there are postdocs, there's the other faculty, there are people from abroad that are coming in to collaborate with us. When I first started here, it was very quiet. You know, you could go a week and not see another person. And now it's a, a hive of activity, a collection of intellectual and physical resources that allows complex projects to move forward, facilities, equipment, it's all right here, ready to go. Well, the new Wright Lab provides very exciting new conditions in terms of integrating the nuclear particle and astrophysics groups with state-of-the-art labs for us to be able to do, you know, detector construction research, 3D printing, the shops are here so we can go through the whole process of design, testing and construction of facilities and detectors that we really haven't had available to us before. Physics continues to push forward and the new Wright Lab is taking advantage of what the frontiers of physics are now and what the frontiers will be. You know, 30, 40 years ago, nuclear structure was the hot topic. The accelerator here was unique in the world as uh, investigating details of nuclear structure. Particle physics, neutrino physics, astrophysics, astroparticle physics, uh, the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva. The Wright Lab now is emphasizing these newer directions in physics. So science, uh, pretty much always, and certainly at its best, is a global enterprise. and It involves connections with people all over the world, all over the country, um, and working in different capacities. And Wright Lab uh, is bringing those people together, and the facilities that it provides are really unique in enabling uh, this approach to science to flourish. Here at the Wright Lab, it's just part of how we do business. We're hosting international events, we're conducting our research across the world. The lab is both the facilities that it possesses, but also the expertise of the people in it. One without the other would be uh, so much less powerful. Building new instrumentation is critical to making the next advances in science. There are relatively few uh, university facilities in high energy physics that can really offer the place to do detector instrumentation, to build experiments, to do detector R&D for new kinds of experiments. I've gone into the machine shop with a drawing on a napkin, and we can work together to try to figure out what's the right solution. In that sense, Wright Lab is really special, not just for the faculty who are here at Wright Lab, but as a regional facility for other institutions to send scientists to be able to take advantage of the facilities. I really liked um, doing things with my hands and getting really dirty, which uh, is what I do now, so I'm an experimental cosmologist. So I build instruments that go on telescopes, and the fact that there are both people and spaces and facilities to be able to do that uh, definitely make way more things possible have to be able to imagine you know yourself and if you know how to fabricate and to build and to make new instruments then your horizons are limitless we have the best student shop facilities in the world and by having two machinists there to assist students with their projects and in the instruction really makes it possible for students to do that much more we can really see you know from experimentalist point of view our experimental dreams really coming true in this space. We don't have to worry about having to limit you know, equipment or these kind of things because we have ample room to basically do what we want. It's exciting to think about our students, our undergraduates, our graduate students having a chance to actually build something. When you have these collaborations that take decades to plan and make and then run for decades, it can be difficult for students to have those kinds of hands-on opportunities and there aren't that many universities that have the facilities to enable students to be involved in that construction. To realize that uh, right down the hall, you know, there's stuff you can touch with your hands, taking data that uh, we might be able to learn something really 
fundamental about the universe that uh, that gives, uh, I think, much needed inspiration. The way that we've designed the spaces and the way that all the work that goes into you know, starting something from scratch has been, one, just a lot of fun. It's a, an exciting thing to be a part of. But two, you know, as I go off and I hope to, to be a professor, I will bring these experiences with me and I'll be able to you know, design and build labs for my, my own work, uh, building on this experience. One of the components that brought me to Yale is, is Wright Lab. Everywhere I would go uh, you know, to scientific meetings or visit other universities, I would meet people uh, who, who spent time at Wright Lab. What I hope is that after uh, these students and postdocs uh, get their training, that they become the next generation of thought leaders and scientists who are really you know, creating something that is bigger than themselves. Creating Wright Lab, we try to be cognizant of the history of the Wright Nuclear Structure Lab and to find the future for uh, physics at Yale and for our field. When I first learned about the opportunity to come in and make an artwork, I really wanted to ensure that I, as the artist, was making something that was representative of the full weight of the accelerator and its impact upon the community. The creation of the mobile that hangs in the public meeting room had a very beautifully complex, rich story. We all sat together in a circle at the courts of the accelerator and we used the classic surrealist drawing game, Exquisite Corpse. So it's a abstract looking drawing based in memory from three physicists that worked inside the accelerator. We went through many, many iterations of the portal monument. There was a real desire to make something that both was oriented towards the past, but actually directed the gaze towards the future. Art and science kind of go in hand in hand from the perspective of, I think of artists as creative individuals trying to express um, abstract ideas in something concrete and formal in the same way that uh, researchers, scientists, are very creative individuals and try to bridge a very um, unique understanding of nature. It's very important to our mission at Yale University and that of Wright Lab to be able to translate our discoveries to the general population and society as a whole. So I see the Wright Lab as a great place for synergy and for some great science to take place. It's a place where um, you know, students, postdocs, faculty members can all come together, um, can utilize the shared resources. It, it allows a collisional frequency between people from different parts of the campus. This new lab is going to allow us to do big science in a big way. The Wright Lab is really a rejuvenated place dedicated to the exploration of the invisible universe. This is an opportunity to build some really significant research infrastructure at Yale to enable great science. We believe in our responsibility to the world and making discoveries for the world is an important thing. So, uh, we shouldn't take science for granted. We shouldn't take discovery for, for granted. We shouldn't take knowledge for granted. Great universities, and Yale has to be a great university, have to be pushing the frontiers of knowledge. And that means pushing the frontiers of science. I am especially excited that we will be making outsized investments uh, in science, in technology, and we'll be doing that in a lot of ways, through the facilities right here on Science Hill, Wright Labs being one of them. We'll do that through people. So how can we bring the world's best thinkers to campus? What do we need to do that? We'll do it through uh, shared equipment, and we'll do it through encouraging graduate education that allows laboratories to be built. I'm very excited about the directions we're going in and uh, the Wright Labs will be part of that community up on Science Hill that uh, comes together uh, and uh, creates uh, a really tight-knit uh, science precinct in this northern part of our campus.